ASCO 2015 was a great success. It provided attendees with the newest trial data, exciting discussion about scientific advancements, and the opportunity to network with oncology colleagues from all over the world. Last week, we queued up some of the exciting data that would be coming out of ASCO 2015, and today we would like to share some of these data with you. Hello and welcome to OncLive News Network. I'm Laura Jones. First, in CLL, data were presented from the double-blind Phase three Helios trial comparing bendamustine and rituximab with or without ibrutinib. 578 previously treated patients with measurable relapsed or refractory CLL or SLL were randomized and received a maximum of six cycles of one of the treatment regimens. Results found that the addition of abrutinib benefited patients in terms of progression-free survival, overall response rates, and complete response rates. Dr. Asher Shannon Khan from the Mayo Clinic in Florida describes his excitement about the findings. We found amazing results. Uh, that is um, just, I can, the only thing I can say, yeah, they're spectacular and they will change how we will treat CLL going forward from today. So the progression free survival assessed at the uh, median of uh, 17 months showed that those patients who were on the brutinib arm have not reached their median progression free survival versus those who were on the um, placebo controlled arm have 13 months. And the curves are separating right from the very get go uh, where the first evaluation for patients were done and that's a spectacular way of saying and the hazard ratio was so significant suggesting that the, the chance or the risk of death or progression uh, on, uh, is significantly decreased by 80 percent among patients who have received a brutinib. Now that's, that's just impressive and they, that, that piece in itself is a practice changing um, data. In breast cancer, researchers shared findings from the Phase 3 Paloma 3 trial looking at fulvestrant with and without pepocyclib. The analyses found median progression-free survival was 9.2 months with the pepocyclib combination versus 3.8 months in the placebo arm. This progression-free survival benefit was observed regardless of menopause status and remained consistent across all pre-specified patient subgroups. In terms of side effects, according to Dr. Nicholas C. Turner, consultant medical oncologist at the Royal Marsden and Institute of Cancer Research in London, pepocyclib and fulvestrant in combination was well tolerated. The incident of fibril neutropenia was very rare and was 0.6% in both arms. Based on the results of Paloma 3, Pebocyclib in combination with fulvestrant is an effective treatment option for women whose cancer progressed on prior endocrine therapy, Dr. Turner concluded. Finally, there was a great deal of focus on immunotherapy at ASCO 2015. One of the trials examining the use of immunotherapy was the Phase 3 Checkmate 067 trial in melanoma. This trial compared the use of nivolumab alone, ipilimumab alone, and the combination of nivolumab plus ipilimumab in the first-line setting. Lead author Dr. Jed Walchuk from Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center describes the benefits seen with combination therapy. Because in that combination cohort, not only did we see the highest response rates, as well as the longest progression-free survival, um, but we also saw no uh, drug-related deaths. Um, and interestingly, clearly the rules about when to stop treatment um, are good rules because we saw that in the patients who stopped treatment with the combination, which was about 37% of patients, um, 67.5% of those patients who stopped treatment had an objective response. And half of those developed that response after they stopped treatment. So I think that we have set some good standard rules for how to apply this therapy that clinicians can use if it should become widely available. This study demonstrates the synergy between PD-1 inhibitors and CTLA-4 inhibitors. Future research must continue to assess the sequential and combinatorial use of different classes of checkpoint inhibitors.
Data on Nouveau map in the Checkmate 057 trial was also presented at ASCO 2015. Dr. Mark Szynski from the University of Pittsburgh describes the study and its key results. The trial that we saw, Checkmate 057, was a phase three randomized trial in the second line setting of advanced non-squamous, non-small cell, comparing the current standard, which is docetaxel, uh, at the FDA approved dose and schedule versus nivolumab. Um, on an every two week schedule. Um, the, the trial uh, was well powered, actually was stopped early because uh, of the demonstration of superiority of nivolumab over docetaxel. So the primary endpoint was overall survival. There was a significant improvement in overall survival. There was about a three month difference in median survival and the hazard ratio was about 0.73 if I remember correctly. Highly statistically significant in this setting. There was a benefit in response rate. Uh, and there were interesting findings with regard to PFS. There wasn't an advantage but there was a crossing of the curves uh, such that if you look at the median PFS, actually it favored docetaxel. But if you look at the one year progression free survival rate, it was about twice as high for nivolumab versus docetaxel. It suggests to all of us that there's a fair significant minority of patients that is getting substantial benefit from nivolumab. In the setting of multiple myeloma, interim analyses from the Phase 3 Eloquent 2 trial were presented. Analyses showed that adding elotuzumab to lenalidomide and dexamethasone reduced the risk of disease progression by 30% in patients with relapsed or refractory multiple myeloma. Lead author Dr. Sager Loniel from Emory University said that Based on this randomized phase three trial, we hope that we will soon have a new treatment option for patients with relapsed or refractory myeloma where an immune therapy-based approach can be added with lenalidomide and dexamethasone for the management of these patients. These are just a fraction of the data released at ASCO 2015. We invite you to read and view more from ASCO by visiting the website on your screen. And that'll do it for today. I'm Laura Jones. Thanks so much for joining us on Onclive News Network. We'll see you next time.